It's what you do that defines you. Conversations. Conversations. <laughs> Conversations. Conversations. With Madonna. 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 Conversations. 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 With Madonna. Madonna. You do that defines you. Welcome. Hi, everyone out there in cyberspace. I don't even know where to look. Hello, everyone out there in cyberspace. Timmy Taco and I are, well, we're shooting the shit today, really, aren't we? Yeah. yeah we're just going to catch just, up just, and. Yeah. We're just hanging out. We're just hanging out. I mean, yeah. here's the thing. What I'm bringing to you is some of the conversations that we have because I'm always laughing with you on the phone. Yeah. Okay. you have a certain way of saying things. So I thought I'd just bring you to the, bring you to the fold. Bring the phone, <laughs> bring the phone to the fold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually in the comfort of my own home, not not stuck in an Eames chair. Yeah. I can't actually, the reason why I'm sitting cross-legged is because I can't touch the floor. So I actually look like a kid on a bench. Well, I offered you something to put your ha- feet on, but you didn't want to put I your did- feet on a poof. <laughs> I didn't need the poof. Is yeah. it called a poof? Poof? I don't know. Well, it's spelled P-O-U-F. Is it? Poof. Yeah. Ah, it's French. Like French. For, French, French for poof. French for put your feet on this. Oh. Well, yeah. Put, 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 oh, fit, ooh, feet on, <laughs> put you feet. Yeah. P-O-U-F. Place. Yeah. Something. Place of you feet. <laughs> Place of <laughs> you feet. <laughs> mm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is, this is my studio. These are my things, my beautiful things. Um, it was an elaborate setup. I know it was an elaborate setup. It but was. Like, such is my life. I demand a level of perfection <laughs> when presenting myself. <laughs> you know, I get the, you I have get no the idea. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, seriously, we need. Can we discuss? Sure. These, these, yeah. Um, props which were put on the table by Tim. Yep. All right. So we've got a what? What do you call the sixties? They, they bubble, are bubble Jenny bottle. Genie bottles. They're genie I think they're bottles. Called. I don't know what this particular one's called because it's got the bubbles on it. And I think it's, I'm pretty sure, because it's got a seam down the side, yeah. that they blow it into a mould. Right. I think that's blown into a mould. Some of the old ones were just like, they're slightly different, but they're like, they're, they're fetching ridiculous prices now. So yeah. Like, we used to go to Savers and get shops and just get them for, yeah. the, for nothing. Yeah, I mean, we had them in our house. Like yeah. I remember growing up, this nineteen sixty seven. Like must I was born in the seventies? Sixty seventies. Yeah, I think they might even go back a little bit further, but yeah. Step back in time. I collected them all at the right time. Yeah, you, you've done a great job because you've got because Tim's got like different colours, so you've got vibes going. Vibes on. going, yeah, yeah. Different sections in the house relates to different colours. Yeah, exactly. You know, blues in the room, reds on the shelf. Yeah. Um, Teak everywhere else. Exactly. Can we just have it discuss what's going sure. on with this bowl? I'm sure. just going to put this bowl on my lap. And you have eggs in here. Yeah, so that's my, my wife does ceramics. Vanessa. Oh, she made them. Well, she I better made be very, ones. very careful. Yeah, they've been kicking around for a little while. Have they? These. Are, so she actually, these are quite heavy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're solid ceramics. They're solid ceramics, mm. which is really good for, yeah. And she, she, she did a... Um, she, she, future did, future predictions. Future predictions, because there is, the I don't know old, if you can see this, but there's an actual uh, coronavirus yeah, in there. There it is. She knew. <laughs> oh, one of the little um, feetsies of oh. one of the spike proteins. Oh, oh I guess. Oh, so, mate, what, does that mean it doesn't work? Well, I, I don't know. One of the spike proteins. You've also got coral. I have a lot of coral at home as well. Yeah, she has a very, um, I guess, nautical theme. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I do like that bowl too. I like the white. On the inside. I do like the I've got a bowl you would love. I'm going to find it and give it to you. I'll take it. Because it's um, red motif and it's circa 1990s probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll see if it fits. I'm gonna, I think it would fit your red shelf actually. Okay. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Meanwhile, I'll back it. at the ranch. Mm. How have mm. you been, Timmy Taco? Have you found any more violins? Uh, <laughs> no, actually I haven't got my violin back. Mm. And then if people don't know what that's all about, I could, did we talk about that on the Christmas special? No, or? we didn't. You didn't. Have, you didn't have the violin at the Christmas special. Yeah, so I went to I went to the um, Oakley Market, which we go to every Sunday, and I got it got basically got forced upon me the the violin. You did is, tell me that. I don't know how a violin gets forced upon. Well, but, but. it's it's everything must go, right? So uh-huh. he saw that I picked it up. Yeah, right. And then threw a threw a wild price at me right. of thirty dollars. Right, right. 
And then I kind of uh, psychologically wrestled with another Asian guy who was who was eyeballing, and I, was, right. I, I said to him like, "I'll go find out how much it is for you," because yeah, I was right. I was I wasn't going to take. I it. feel like I'm in a in a in a um in an episode of the castle. Tell him oh. he's dreaming. Tell him he's dreaming. <laughs> and then I went back to the guy and I went, ah, "He wants thirty bucks. Forget it. Forget it." Because nine times nine and a half times out of ten, if you pick up any of that stuff that you think is worth something, it's it's not worth not, anything. No holy shit. No, no, that's um, true. And uh, I got a couple of other things. And then because I wasn't buying the violin, he goes, oh, you can have the violin for 10 bucks if you want. I'm like, fuck it, I'll take it. I'll take it. But when you take us through that process, because someone says to you, hey, listen, since you're not going to buy it, like since basically you're paying him to get rid of his junk. Yeah. Pretty yeah, much. Pretty much. Pretty and, much. I and, think these particular guys do... Um, demolition stuff so they clear out all the items from the house mm. before they take the house apart and sell right. the house right right for different things yeah so gotcha. construction um sales uh content sales yeah. but usually deceased estates or whatever so but but so you think to yourself i don't really i don't play the violin i don't need no, a violin. But, I, but i've got this crazy weird fetish of collecting <laughs> instruments that i'd that I've seen in my life. <laughs> That's your Tinder profile. I was gonna, yeah. <laughs> I collect things. Um, my fetish is collecting, yeah, my collecting string instruments. Yeah, I like to blow trumpets, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, but there was a trumpet there, and and, um, <laughs> and I did that. I thought that was a bit of a gross, a gross instrument to get secondhand. <laughs> wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you say? I whose do mouth? whose mouth get, whose but don't mouth? you have those reeds is that a re, it's not a reed instrument is not that on that one no because a trumpet no just and has the trumpet's it. got like if you if you on the on that little bit above the, these little bits <laughs> yeah. i'll find out when the I, conveyor I, belt yeah there's <laughs> a little the button there's a there's a release valve oh uh, i yeah. know what you're gonna say don't i'm gonna spew and it's that <laughs> yeah so oh. so yeah that's why I went against it because I was like, uh, "Oh, what's in the release I valve?" Like, I don't like release valves, and, <laughs> and the cork in the release valve was all don't, oh, broken don't. down. And people are worried about fucking BS nineteen. Yeah, Jeez, <laughs> exactly. So I don't, I didn't, I don't go for wind instruments <laughs> so much because <laughs> that's another. That's on your bio on your yeah. Tinder profile. I don't go for wind instruments. I don't go for wind instruments. Yeah, but I but I strum a mean guitar, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a wind instrument? Yeah. <laughs> um, so the violin, I thought, I'll give it a go because my niece plays violin. And so I called oh. her up, sent her some photos. She's just like, ah, oh, it's a piece of shit. Don't worry. Forget it. Forget it. Because she's, she's got a violin that's like... Stradivarius or something. Oh, something like that. It was some like 11 amazing. grand or something. Yeah, yeah. Because when you get Outrageous. to a level, you sort of start buying instruments at that level and you, and like you can hear the difference you can tell the difference you can tell the difference between that and like this ten dollar well that's right well I, I bought it home and, and tightened up a string and went, and went Whoa. <laughs> oh that's a very robust yeah, sound that's, i like it <laughs> um so that's why i thought i'd check it out and then there's a violin shop just down the road yeah right so i took it there and he's like oh, this is a hundred years old and this is you know from this German maker and totally worth doing up, fixing. Yes. So I booked it in. You booked and it I in? Sh and, I, and I should have got it back three weeks ago. So I've got to get down there and pick it up. But explain to the audience. I mean, you guys don't know this. Like, I'll ring Tim and I'm like, what are you doing today? And he's like, I'm refurbishing the violin case. Yeah, I'm redoing a violin case. <laughs> he's literally because, like... Well, because he gave me a violin case because the other one... It was with it. Didn't really do it justice. So I'm like, yeah. He goes, oh, do you like renovating stuff? I'm like, yeah, I'll have a crack. And Unbelievable. Then, yeah. So I like that. I like I like working with my hands. That's another thing. That's me. another thing for the Tinder profile. <laughs> my String. wife's going to hate this Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> my wife. Um, I don't know. Yeah. She might be like, I had no idea you had a wind instrument fetish. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, not a wind. Yeah, it was a string instrument fetish. That's string instrument for sure. Because there's, there's two guitars here. There's four guitars behind that. Yeah. And there's six guitars in the roof. Six guitars in the roof. Yeah. I mean, that's mental. <laughs> it's a good name for an album. It is. Six guitars in the six roof. Six guitars in the roof. Four guitars over there. That should actually be the, <laughs> two the lyrics. Two guitars over here. <laughs> two guitars over yeah. here. Four guitars over there. <laughs> 
<laughs> and a bubble friggin' what do you call them? Genie uh, bottle. And a genie bottle. Yeah. To my right. Do you call them genie bottles because of genie? I think from so. the sixties. Yeah, it have to be. Yeah. But although a genie lamp actually is a little bit of a different I've got a genie lamp at home. Yeah, know, but a genie yeah, a genie lamp is one of one I've of got them one ones. of the, I've got one. Yeah. Open sesame. It vibes. is. I know, yeah. but it never happens. No. no I, I have tried for the wishes, but it just doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, so, but that's his, we, like, yeah, so you've, no more violins. So violins, but we may, it's it's one of those things that I think I might actually sell. So, oh. like, I get these things and I go, oh, it's worth that, I'll keep it. I know you, you were, t- he was telling me the price of something before, actually, one of these friggin' bubble genie lamps, and I'm like, sell them. Yeah. Like, nah. Nah. Every time you say to me, I'll get something, I'm like, oh my God, sell it. You're like, nah, I think I'll yeah. just refurbish the friggin' yeah, package like it, it comes in. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like the score. I like the story. I, I feel like for you, it's really about, because I was thinking about this the other day when I was speaking to Jezbot, mm-hmm. and I know you as well, like you guys will recycle and upcycle anything. Anything. But I feel like for you, it's the bargain. I like the hunt. You, you hence just, the hence the records. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I'll go like I love records, but as soon as I see twenty five, thirty five dollars on it, I lose the. Oh, I you lose! lose it. Yeah, I you, lose the fetish it. goes. You lose. Le- like I can, I can physically feel the difference. You can feel that just leaving your body going. Listen, I unless, was totally unless into I've this. already got the record, and then I see it for eighty bucks. I'm like, I've got that. I've got that. Yeah, right. We want to do t shirts up. I've got that on vinyl. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that when you go to nightclubs, oh, stuff, I've got that like, on vinyl. That's go, very yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's it's... that guy pointing at his chest? <laughs> <laughs> but you do have now. Where is it here, What's Mr. That? Bungle? Mr. Bungle. Mr. Oh, it's right. Yep, it's never leaving yeah, his sure. side. There yeah, you go. So you got me that. I did. I tried to get that for twenty years. Yeah. But but under under the um, under the idea that I wanted to find it. You know, because I resisted a lot when you said, which which record do you want me to buy her? Yeah. I did resist a lot. because Because there was a part resistance. of it is, part of it is, uh, then I've, then I've got it. So there's, so I won't. Really? I won't necessarily find it. That's. Out in the wild. But I'd be happy if I found it out in the wild. But I know I won't, so. See, if I, if there's something that I want and it's rare. I want it. I want to like procure it. I want to know it's in my home. I want to know it's a one-off. Like yeah, I've got some. I do um, like that. Yeah. But I do. I like accidentally coming across it. Like it's like it's taken all this time for it to find me. Oh really? Oh, yeah, I like how, that. You, I get I'm that. Very, I'm very very patient. Oh look, I very get that. I'm, I'm very patient too. But if I've waited a long time, it's usually jewelry or artwork for me. Okay. But if I've waited a long time and I go. So, for example, years ago, I would say, oh, my God, I really would love, because I'm a jewellery person, like, I really love that ring, but really, really expensive. And I was so poor. Like, I don't know about you, but I lived under the poverty line for a long motherfucking time. Some would, ar- some would argue, and I still do. Yeah. Because it's really interesting, because then, you know, everything becomes more expensive, and then you're still earning what you were. So, it's kind of really weird. Yeah, but I like, I'm not, I'm very patient. I like the weight. Yeah, but same here. I don't mind. So, I don't so mind. years ago, I was like, I really want that or I really want this. But then it was like, it's out of my reach financially. But then years and years later, I might find it like at a cash converters or whatever. And yeah, then I'm like, like, I'm a, I'm a um, side of the road guy. Like, I I'll know. Drive around and then if I see something on the side of the road, yeah, then it sparks the memory of, oh yeah, I wanted that. So, and then it's, it's found me. So do you have, so, <laughs> so do you have side of the road shame? What's that? Exactly. See, what's that? What is it? Side of the road shame where, you know, you actually. Shame. Can, shame. No shame. No shame. No shame. Nah. Cause some, I have that. Zero shame. I, I actually, when we put our TV out on the road, I like, like this set up here, I set it up. I, I <laughs> put the um, remote control, <laughs> fresh batteries, <laughs> instructions. Really? Yeah, free. This is how it works. If you have troubles, come my, back and say good day. Yeah, that's it. That's because that's... it's passing it on. Because I know whoever's going to pick it up wants it. Yeah, right. Or could use it. Yeah, and right. And I don't want to sit there going, oh, "What the fuck is wrong with this?" Thing? <laughs> it's free. Mean? Yeah, and they... it works. Yeah, but they don't incentive need incentive to take it. You know what I mean? There take are people it. that actually. So I used to live in the southeast of Melbourne, which is like Dandenong Way, right? Yeah. 
you could put something out. You could put, I mean, this, these, the people that live in these suburbs, it's amazing because they're so, like, they're people that come from Iraq and Pakistan and India and countries where, like, I mean, you have to admit, like, here in Australia or the Western, you know, the Western countries, I'd say here, Australia, America, Canada, mm. you know, we just really, we're a very disposable society in that, like, we just chuck yeah, our yeah. stuff out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They don't work, oh, those shoes are ruined because, you know, Good. something's not stuck together. Yeah, they yeah, just yeah. chuck it out. I so. Hate that. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. I'm no, surrounded by it, shit. It, well, you know, I mean, it's about that, you know, upcycling. But when you, you know, and I've been partnered with people, interestingly enough, India, Iraq, who like don't throw anything out and they have a use for everything. I mean, I remember my ex actually chopping, having a uh, butcher's knife to chop um, chicken wire. <laughs> okay. And I remember coming out and the butcher's knife had like all kinks in it from where he'd like been chopping. I'm like, what the for fuck what? are you doing? I'm like, haven't you heard of tin snips or something? And he's like, what for? This week's great. Yeah, okay. Yeah, do I, do you know a, mean? I do a bit of that action. Yeah, yeah. So so the thing is like when you'd put stuff on hard rubbish and it didn't matter what it was, it could be the most nefarious, nebulous, crazy thing, it would go like that. Yeah. Like, like that. People yeah, would... straight away. And there were people that were down there who would actually have trailers like these... The always men that would have trailers and go and no shame whatsoever fill them up with everyone's stuff because yeah just it's like, mainly the steel they they take the steel first because you can go and you can get cash for it can you yeah see I wouldn't know that so metal recycling all that kind of scrap stuff so um, a trailer full of that is like I don't know maybe you get one hundred and fifty bucks but it's good days pickings do you, you reckon know? absolutely I don't hundred percent no. I'm not doing I'm that. I'm not doing that shit. I can't. No. And plus the... Like, Load you've got in, physically... pick up. And, and apparently it's against the law in Orlando. It's yes, stealing, that's the other thing. Like, fuck it's off. fucking crazy. And they, and they strategically t time it so that it happens during the wet season. Yeah. So they want everything to get destroyed. Yeah, it's true because that's it's like... hard rubbish is in June, July. Yeah. Yeah. So fuck them. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I'm... I'm and, and kudos to, if there's anyone listening who actually is one of those friggin' side road pickers, yeah. good on you. And if you're the kind of person that comes out and goes, oh, you're stealing my rubbish, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure stealing rubbish is an oxymoron. Stealing rubbish. How do you steal rubbish? I don't know. Who you the can hell add knows? to other people's rubbish. So I hate that when you when you go and put your bag in somebody else's bin. Oh, all, it's so People get precious about that too. I know, but I don't get it. It's and a rubbish Apparently bin. that's against the law. Is it? Apparently. No way. The, the laws are fucked. Oh, my God. I didn't God. notice. I had, oh, my well, God. But I just do whatever I want anyway. I don't give a shit anyway. I mean, no, I think that's outrageous behaviour. Yeah. Because if you need fucking space in your bin and you don't have the space. And you your might... bins. I, I, my thing is as soon as it, it, it exits the threshold of your property, it's public domain. Uh, yeah, yeah. Peace. <laughs> Can I just okay? I can't go through and take your tax receipts and all that kind of shit. I don't want to take personal information out of yeah. people's stuff. Yeah, but I do want to like add my disgusting nappies and um, well, cat but, litter to it. Well, do you think it's because <laughs> some people wash their bins? Because my mum's a bin washer, like she's a bleach bin washer. Like her bins are actually really clean. So if someone chucked their nappy cat litter yep. situation in there, it'd probably annoy her. Okay, I've yeah. had a dead bird in the bottom of my one for three weeks. I hit a bird the other day. Like I did the old, I did the old. Um, <laughs> it's so good. He came across, he came across at breakneck speeds and I saw him, I saw him do the, the dodge from the car that was yeah. next to me and he went pretty close to the front of my car. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh shit, I must have hit him. But I looked, looked in the mirror and I'm like, oh, I don't see him there. Yeah. Like, okay, okay. Drove around for another six hours or whatever. And when I got home, he was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh God! On the, know, on the front oh, of the on the front the, of the car. Yeah, in the grill. Oh, poor bastard! And then, have you ever? No, no, you've never touched a, a, a corpse. Before? Oh no, yeah, definitely. I used to have pigeons. Yeah, okay. So they're very fragile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Can you say that again? You need that in the edge. Very, very fragile. fragile. <laughs> um, very fragile because I thought, oh, I'll just like I'll loosen him up and like I had to do it with sticks because I'm like. Oh really? You're a yeah. Big, I don't big, yeah. You're not it. into touching. Nah, I don't. I don't no, no. Nah. Even when my cat died, I was a little bit. Uh, mm, uh, really? Yeah, it was really strange. Yeah, that's that's but, interesting. Um, but I've yeah, I've, I've tried to pull him out, and boom, his legs came off. Oh, ooh. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, that's uh, the whole so trumpet situation like trying, going on again. Trying to push him out with sticks, and it's oh, just going straight through him. It was like, oh man, I fucked this bird up. Yeah, but I think things—they're not <laughs> normally that. 
they're not normally that fragile. I think it's because you'd driven around for six hours Maybe. and you'd been chopped into the, you know, like yeah, the yeah, grill yeah. had felt just... felt pretty bad. It was, yeah. It's actually, now thinking about it, I can still, I can still feel it. Yeah, the like poor... Yeah, that's it's look. I, I after I had the car accident, I had a car accident a couple of years ago, and I was in a neck brace, so it really hurt my neck, right? And so I was in a neck brace for ages, and I was actually on my way to a therapist, like an allied health professional, like a bone therapist, to actually get you know some whatever like therapy on my neck and lower back. And as I was driving, I couldn't believe these two birds were actually fighting with each other. Yep. Flew into my window. <laughs> Because I had it down, it was in Queensland. What, into so the car? Into the car, <laughs> into the car, and so my neck, which was fragile, yeah. I just whipped it back again. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. "Oh my god!" And then flew fucking straight back out again. Wow! And I thought, do you know if you think about actually that one in a trillion billion chance, like that they would actually come into my window, like at whatever speed I was driving. Well, that's why they say it's good luck when a, when a bird shits, shits on, on you. you. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like you think about it. Like, oh, they're shitting all the time in the, in the air, you think? Yeah, they're all the time. Yeah, true. That's all true. All the time. So for that bird, for that timing, for you to be at that exact, exact spot, moment, it's yeah. kind of lucky. Well, when you think about it. Or unlucky. Yeah. I mean, it's like probably, it's, it's, I mean, pretty high odds of getting hit by a bird. Have you seen many sparrows? Remember sparrows used to be fucking everywhere? Yeah, you're right. But yes, yeah, sparrows. Maybe in the city you get a little group of them. But yeah, they where, used to be... Where did they go? People? Yeah, like, you know, you'd be at the cafe or something like that. Yeah, and they'd yeah. Be fucking everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like, we don't get seagulls in the burbs. So if we get the pigeons, beach, though. We get pigeons. Yeah, lots, lots of pigeons. Love the pigeons. But sparrows, I've noticed, aren't as around as much. Did they do... Do you know I need to goggle it? What happened to sparrows? Yeah. I just want to see, like, I want to see... Uh, uh, have sparrows... Um, is the sparrow population down in Victoria? Okay, we'll, we'll do that. Is is the is the is the sparrow population? Oh, sparrow! I'm going to get all these ads about fucking sparrows oh, from yeah, now on. Exactly. Is the sparrow faster than the oppressor MK2? What the hell is that? Is the sparrow <laughs> worth a... it? GTA. Is the sparrow faster than the buzzard? This is the all. Oh, this is all game. That's all gaming. Oh, is that what it Grand is? Theft Auto. Oh, I didn't. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Okay, is the sparrow numbers? What did you say? Population? Population, Population down, down in Victoria, 2024. Down in Victoria. Do I put some... Now. Weight? Yeah. Where have all the sparrows gone? Bah, 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 <laughs> bam. <laughs> this was in the 2019. Why are there no sparrows around at the moment? Reduction in the availability of, availability of favoured food either for adults or chicks or both, increased levels of pollution, loss of suitable nesting sites. But hang on, there was an actual, the ABC did a um, whole thing on this. Right. Um, the dwindling number of sparrows seen in Australian backyards and around the world is considered by some to be one of the great natural mysteries of recent times. It's, a, mis it's a mystery. Uh, Passa domesticus, known mm -hmm. to many as the house sparrow. Yeah, house sparrow. The house was introduced to Australia from Bit Britain okay. between 1863 and 1870. Species remain in some same the same region all the year round. Species to species. The species to species. Yep. Yeah. Definitely, it's um, but not just in Australia. It's all over the world. They're oh, decreasing right. sparrows. Maybe oh, they did they put the sparrow in the cage when they're in the mines? Oh. Canary in the cage. Canary in the cage. Canary in the cage. Would a sparrow work? If you couldn't get a canary, where well, were they getting all the canaries from? Well, canary I don't know, but maybe canary they're islands? well. Maybe they're more susceptible to stuff because they're the ones that are actually the popular. Well, although, do you don't what the hell is a canary? You don't see canaries really anywhere or budgie. We were but... talking about it the other day budgies, and so we worked out the budgie is from Western Australia, and it's a um, ground, or well, sort of predominantly ground nesting bird. Bird. And that's Western Australia, so the hot climates. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because we have, like, in, in in Queensland, I never saw one pigeon, ever. Not once. But here, pigeons everywhere, and I yeah. love them. And I have to say, I'm a pigeon lady. Yeah. I have bird seed in the back of my car. Okay. And I will, like, I was in Ligon Street a couple of weeks ago to meet. No, yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> Svenja. <laughs> um, no, I was actually on Ligon Street meeting up with a girlfriend, and I got so excited. I parked next to the um, to the park, got out of the car. She had parked on the other side of the park, 
So, and she was, she rang me. She's like, where are you? And I was like, hang on a minute. I've got to feed the pigeons. Yep. And I threw the bird seed and she, and I, and she goes, oh, hang on a minute. She goes, are you were all those pigeons? Because she just saw them all flock to me. You know what? It's tough. But as you were talking. Yeah. I remember the dream I had last night. <gasps> oh my God. Your dreams are amazing. Let's go. Yeah. Um, look up the significance of okay. a bird on the finger. Oh, great. Because, and I was doing, I was doing the old. And he was, and he came to the finger. Oh it was my a coloured bird. Okay. Okay. I dream dictionary. It was a, um, I don't think it was a buggy, but it was a. Oh my God. Maybe that's a good. Rosella. Bird. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Oh, here we go. Finger. I can still actually can, now. Now that I've talked about it, I can still feel it grabbing onto my finger. Strangely enough. Yeah, well, simply put, this signifies that good luck is coming your way. Your way. Yep. Meaning that now is the perfect time to take action to accomplish your plans. Mm. Embrace the gifts coming to you, and okay. find ways to increase your confidence, insight, and spirituality. Okay. Great. Hang on. Or death. <laughs> da, da, da. Yeah. It usually ends with something grim. Or it well, it death. says it's an excellent. What does it mean when you see a bird in your dream? It's an excellent omen to see a bird or birds in a dream. What about a bird... on the finger, though? Well, no, that was the finger. So oh, it's okay. the finger was. But I'm just going like okay, yeah, I'm yeah. generalizing now. now, now. You're broad. I'm kind of yeah. I'm broad bird strokes. E exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a bird can represent many things such as prosperity, mm -hmm. a new beginning, growth, spiritual freedom. Travel, ding, 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 oh, we yeah. have a winner. Going to, going to Japan. Yep, yeah. going to Japan. Konnichiwa and financial gain. Okay, so, so let's 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 make the tie. In, I'm just about to pick up the violin and I want to sell it. Well, and, and, and it, I am travelling. And you are, because it says in most cases, birds represent travel, which brings wealth and happiness. Sick. That's amazing. Yeah, that's the story of my life. That It is. It's pretty yeah. good. I mean, that's because you go around buying... Shit. Well... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we shouldn't say by acquiring, really. Yeah. But here's the thing. Most, most of what I buy, people say, what the fuck do you want that for? Well, yeah. But, yeah. but I mean, you do. I mean, here's the thing. You did get. So, Timmy Taco came to my place to do some work. Mm -hmm. And you're wearing your boots that you'd found on. Work boots at the side of the road. Side of the road. And then I see Jezbot the other day and he'd done the same friggin' thing. <laughs> did it. you? Were you both at the same? No, like, did you just no. happen to be in the side of the road and like, hey, there's two sides no, 11? We're always, or... we're always driving around from job to job. So yeah, you right. go through different, different areas. Yeah. And then if there's hard rubbish, eyes, eyes to the, eyes to the path. Eyes to the, eyes yeah. to the ground. Um, we've always had good luck with, um, if you're at a club or, um, Jesbot had a good one where he walked reluctantly was invited to the um casino to, to He was reluctantly invited. Or yeah, he was well, well, well he was, was reluctant to go. Oh, I was gonna say was he invited and reluctantly yeah. Yeah, and it was sort of like one of those yeah. things where you go, Oh, okay, do I go in, do I spend money, do I do I lose money? And he walked through the um the glass doors, looked down, hundred bucks, went, Thanks for coming. One left. <laughs> Up, so jet spot. And that I is... never gambled again, so he's up. Yeah, he's got right. Hundred percent success rate in gambling. So here's the thing, I find gold. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, I'm a gold so if I go usually it's at the beach, I will find okay. one side keep, of a gold. Keep talking, earring. I'm just gonna grab something. Yeah, okay. This is great. Okay. <gasps> oh my god, how exciting. Oh, okay, let me tell you. I know it's going to be shit. No, it's I not. Well, I'm a gold. I, I find gold and it's real gold. Well, and my I, thought, I thought. Oh, this can't be. Come on. I thought based on that. <laughs> what? Okay. Oh, hang on. Hold on. Do you know what I mean? So it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a, a, a shine to it. I think it's kind nah, of. Nah, that's not gold. It's not? This stuff here. Yeah, what is it? I thought maybe it was. Mm, I can't imagine. Some, it would like maybe it was braided or weaved into a necklace or something and then it snapped off because it's I don't very think gold would well it wouldn't be brass I don't know I don't think it's just that weight to it maybe plated yeah I reckon it doesn't feel like gold for me but okay. what about this this is I think that's, it, that's was where was that that's gold that I found down the side of this chair yeah that's definitely so somebody's had it that's and... definitely gold and a real pearl did you reckon Hundred percent. Shit, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's a real pearl. Okay, let's see if I've got another another treasure. Um, that's that's for the. That's yeah, for the, this is not gold. Nah. Can we can we get a focus on that, Taco? Anyone see that? 
I don't reckon that's gold. And then just so you fucking know, that's just fucking wanky gold, so. Tell me, like, that's my freaking wrinkled. I don't believe in your booty! I'm gonna have a look over here, I've got nothing like. See? Okay, yeah, there's a few. There's a few more, so sorry, everybody. Alright, so let's have a look because I am the gold whisperer. Yeah. Right. Definitely. These are some, these are some of my other <gasps> let's have a look. Oh my god, I love this. Oh fabuloso. I've okay. always wondered. This is but, but I'm a little bit embarrassed to go into a jeweler oh, and why? say, What is this? Why is this? Where is this? Because um they they do the old they do this thing. Yeah, go. I've got they one go, of those. Shoot. That's not gold, that's not silver, that's palaver. Yeah, what? Is, well, that's just decoration. That's just that's La Visa, not even. What's a La Visa? La Visa's a place to go buy jewelry. This is a mini friggin' hand. Um, this is fucking bizarre. What is that? Can you tell me? Um, I mean, what? Where did you find that? And why do you still have it? That is a Mickey Mouse hand. And I thought it was a Mickey Mouse hand. But I picked that up because I know there's a section in in the Disney. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Because, like, feel that, right? It's I really think It feels heavy. like that could be ivory. Oh, ebony and ivory. I mean? And then and then down the side of, of each of the glove, there's, like, it all looks like microscopic diamonds. Yeah, I but know, they're not real. But I thought maybe there was a high-end section of the gift shop at um, Disney and that maybe, I don't fucking know. I just have to say, when he shows you this, on when he shows this to you, Timmy Taco has kept a Mickey Mouse hand because of the weight, the feel, and it could, it, it's the potentiality of yeah. being something important. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but. yeah, this is this is just blather. This is silver, real silver with. Uh... Yeah, that's that's amazing. So, that's all right. That's there's just me, there's me road treasures. What's that one? That's shit. No, that's it? fine. It's silver, but it's just got some play jewelry in the. Oh, so the, that's silver. Yeah, the the rest of it's just. Okay, leather. so I can I can chuck that in my silver treasure box. You can chuck it in your silver treasure box. I feel like this this is nothing. Nothing. It's zero. Nothing. So I just. I mean, just I don't know. What, I don't even know what. It, what was it? A necklace? Must have been. Must have been. But that's where did you find it? That was outside of Vanessa's. Oh, Vanessa's. The little Vanessa, Audrey, my daughter, oh. um, outside of her school, which has no. um, a large Greek community. Oh. And I thought... And you thought, ha-ha, 18-karat gold people. I thought, yeah, because you know how you see um, Italian and Greek babies and they've generally got a diamond in their ear or like yeah, no, something yeah, like absolutely. high end. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was thinking, it's okay, always... so mama's got... A brand new bag. Yeah, Angelina. Yeah. Angelique. Yeah. Um, something... For a confirmation, yeah, yeah, and it's finally broken off. That's that's where my mind went. Yeah, in nah. the treasure hunt, no, nah. that's treasure. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah, I, okay, cool. I definitely find I'm a gold finder. So that's a pearl, you reckon? It's 100 percent a real pearl. Like that's not. And then what's so? Give me, give me, like evaluation. Because so, that was on that was on the that oh, was on. Yeah. No, no. If there was a that pearl. was at a gig, I found that on the on the floor of a club. No, this is real. It's real diamonds. It's real gold and a real oh, pearl. So she was cut as. Yeah. So you just need the backing for that, and it. She didn't know until she she went like that at the end of the night. And went oh fuck. Yeah, that's all real, mate. That's definitely real diamonds. I reckon. So what can you get for a pearl reckon, these days? Oh uh, well, one pearl, not much, but a pair of earrings like that, I reckon, would be at least four hundred dollars at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> at least because I—I mean, well, I, I can't always... sell all that. No, you couldn't even. I mean, the diamonds are like. So it's worthless. Well, not if you stick it in your ears. Mm. I don't want to stick anything in my ears. Well, well, here's the thing. <laughs> I mean, even it's even That's for myself, where I have sets, you know, of jewelry that have got pearls in them. Like, what are they second hand? Do you know what I mean? Who are you going to sell it to? You're not going to sell it to Mazzucchelli's. They've got their own. Yeah, that's true. But that's actually a really beautiful earring. Not too bad. Not too shabby. And not too shabby. I feel sorry for the person who lost it because that would have been a really nice uh, set. Do you know loss what I mean? Is, her loss is my game. Well, her it's loss is your... Except that. Sorry, I'm just I'm wiggling my feet if I you can see. I haven't got any more. Let me just have a look on the... Uh, well, the yeah. thing is, is it your game? Because you, you can leave them on a frigging windowsill. Yeah, but for you to analyse. Yeah, but it's just going to go back. Well, you've got... It's kind of like... I guess it's all the rage to wear one different earring and another different earring. So maybe you could wear that pearl one with the other shebanga bang and see what happens. Here we go. 
entirely unprofessional to go off off screen. Do you remember Yo Raps? No. MTV Yo Raps? I don't know. I don't think so. These are these are sort of hard to come by as well. Do I have to um? Do I have to fucking rip the packet? Aha! Got it. Oh, what's this? There's like collector cards. There's everybody's favorite vanilla ice. <gasps> I do remember that. Everybody's other favorite vanilla ice. Oh my god. Yo, Raps being an instant winner. We've got Chuck D. We've got MP. M- Did you, do you know the whole story EPMD. around Vanilla Ice? Ice Ice yeah. Baby. Is it him? Yeah. That actually it was Biggie blah blah who actually owned the copyright to his song. He never gets any royalties. Doesn't he? No. Well, you know, he does um, renovations now. Yeah. Him. So what happened? He told this story apparently. Um, what the hell is his name? Victor, it's something that starts with V. I'll find out. Find out. So this Vanilla Ice, Ice Ice Baby, um, he was apparently the story goes that I think it was Biggie who Biggie who? Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls. Is he that's not the guy that got killed? Yes. Then it's not him, it's someone it's another one of these people who are still alive. Yeah. Um one of the rappers. Oh, I'll have to bloody get back to you because I know my sister's told me the story many times. Yeah. And actually, she was at, she went to Vanilla Ice's con- concert and he told the story. There's, there's, this is where I got the V from. His surname is Van Winkle. Van Winkle. Yes, Robert Matthew Van Winkle. Right. So at his concert... Show us your Van Winkle. Yeah, Van <laughs> Winkle. He, uh, they, what happened was they actually extorted him. They held him upside down over a balcony and yes, said... Yes, did hear that. Yeah, did you hear that? He yes, said he told that. him at a bloody concert. Yeah. So he gets zero. He... Who was it though? Because do you know who? Like who... Suge Knight, maybe. That's the one. Yeah. I don't know why I thought Biggie. Suge Suge is the kind of Shug. dude that would do uh, over the balcony. Would do the al- yeah trick. over yeah. the shoulder balcony holder. Hell yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, but he Vanilla Ice came out in concert here. He played. Queensland and my my oldest brother was on a um That's where she saw him. Uh, yeah, okay. Well she was at this gig. See if see if she remembers this part. Okay. That um they went up there and they're like walking around and saw posters for vanilla ice and they're like, We're fucking going. We're yeah, going. So yeah, they yeah. got tickets and, and went to it. It was a kind of a smallish show. It wasn't like a massive Yeah, yeah, no, thing. yep. And then halfway through the set, Jess, which is one of the one of the boys' wives uh, she jumped up on stage and did the did the, the vanilla oh. did the vanilla <laughs> ice with him, and then right at the end of it, he's he's on the yeah so ice ice baby and she's just gone, boom and dacked him, dacked on stage. Him. That's awful. Good on her. Yeah, and then the the bouncers have just gone Rrr! and threw her off. And, and no, grabbed her, and so all the boys got up, and then there was a massive brawl. On oh my stage. god, I'm gonna find out. Find out. Yeah. That's, True story. I feel, I feel like I need to message her now and see if she can tell me. Yeah, well, you might as well. Do, well do, did you do, did you see Vanilla Ice get dacked at that gig you went to? Okay, in so I'm going to say. I think it was Queensland. You know Pretty sure. how you saw Vanilla Ice, Ice. in concert? <laughs> well, did he get dacked? Get dacked how do you spell dacked? D a k k e d. D a c k e d. Dacked. I fucking. I've, I'm, I'm gonna do double k. Did he get dacked? I'm at, against. At, I've I've got a concert. couple of rules. A couple of rules in my in my life. Yeah. I don't. I've, I I stopped scaring people. That. You know that. That. <laughs> that, that jump what, out. Were you, <laughs> were no, you because was... I I I can't. I came from a. From all boys, right? So that happened a lot. So didn't it? yeah, and then what would happen is that um, if somebody started the scare, you got to be ready to be scared ten times worse back. Yeah, right. So, so it was almost not worth the re scare, even if you could get a really good get. You'd have to be prepared to be terrified. Well, here's the thing, <laughs> because I, I watch those kind of reels when I can't sleep and I like to laugh at stuff, but inevitably you get those reels where people do this. And there was a reel, I mean, it, they do these scary ones, like where they, they'll they put, well, where they're looking out a window and someone will throw like a, a head, like a mannequin head up yeah. and they freak out. But there was one recently and I thought this was, I thought this was full on, where women were pretending or men were pretending 
to sleep with another person. So, for example, they'd have like a mannequin and they'd be kissing it when their partner gets home. My God. I mean, I was like... Fuck that. That's nuts. Yeah, you're Just insane. One guy was actually laying on the couch on top of this mannequin, <laughs> pretending to kiss it. And the woman went outside, picked up a mini fridge from... They had like a outdoor bar area and threw it on his back. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and he's like, oh. Bridge that motherfucker. <laughs> yes, some of them are out. I mean, that's, anyway, meanwhile. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the other time, oh, God, should I tell this story? Yeah, do it. Oh, God. So, the other reason, the other main reason why I quit scaring yeah, yeah. forever. Was so you didn't vowed, get a mini fridge on your no, back? No, I vowed never to do it again because I used to go over to, while I was courting my wife. Right. Um, and we used to hang out just all the time, just hang out, you know. And it's I got, your wife, you and your wife, yeah, just so, hang out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I got let in the house by the parents. Um, she was having a shower, and they're just like, "Oh, you can just you can just hang out till she's till she's ready." This is not an Italian household because no. that would never happen in my day. Yeah, well, I wouldn't we, have, I wouldn't have been hanging out in the bathroom or anything. No, like I know, but it still it would. They would have yeah, been like but, waiting in the car until she's out. Yeah, of the maybe show. they thought she was in the toilet or something. They, so they didn't she'll, care. She'll they, a, that was fine. Um, that's, I mean, Tim we're, Tucker, we're, like, we're it's Timmy Tucker. Been around years <laughs> at this stage. True, true. That's true. Good point because you guys met when you were like. Uh, probably 11. Yeah. She was 11, I think. We yeah. didn't start going out for years and years. Oh, he, and she, he was also 11. Like no, you were I would 12. have been a little bit older. I would have been probably 13. Oh, but I'm, what I'm saying is you weren't 26. Babies. Yeah, you were just kids. Babies, just yeah. hanging out. Yeah. Um, and um, so I was hanging out in her room and then something came over me. I thought, oh, it's a great opportunity to scare her because she, 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 she doesn't know I'm here. <laughs> And, and girls so, don't really like it. We don't. We nah, don't. Nah, do. this, and this is it's, it's one of my biggest regrets. I, I will say, really? I, and I fucking constantly apologise for it. Really? So I went. Oh, oh, so it's got to be forty. Like we've got to be what? Like thirty years later, and you're still apologising for it? Oh, thirty-five years later. Wow, yeah. that's Easily. amazing. Easily. That's. And yeah. so I went. Oh, oh where, uh, where can I? Oh, okay, I jumped in her cupboard, and then closed the doors. And then she was, she, she came into the room and went straight to the cupboard to get it closed out. And like, as she's coming in the room, I'm going, oh, I don't want to fucking do this. Oh no. What am I doing? So you wanted to back out? I wanted to, I instantly wanted to back out because I thought I'm going to, this is fucking going to be terrifying. And this also this is someone terrifying. you want to court her and then, and she's going to think you're insane. <laughs> and hell. years later he's buying violins. She came straight yeah. over to the cupboard. Like if she went. To the bed, I would have gone, oh, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I'm... Yeah, yeah. But she came straight to the cupboard and I could see through and I went, ah, uh -oh. uh, I think I'm going to follow through with this. Oh. And she opened the cupboard and instead of going, rah, I just went, uh, oh. and fell out. Oh, and my God. she fucking shit herself. Oh, really? She collapsed. She collapsed. Uh, she went into I oh, submit, mate. Oh, really? She went fawned. She fawned. She fawned. She completely, that was it. And I've never felt worse ever since. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. That was probably the worst I ever felt. Really? I think. Yeah, I fucking really. But that I said, speaks I will to your never, ever, ever scare anyone. Ever again. Including you. <laughs> ever again. Wow. And I, and I never did. And you never did. Nah, that really, fuck that. that put the kibosh on it. that. Because I, 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 I put myself in the position of. Her collapsing. Yeah. Oh, and that was fucking fucked. But see here, isn't that interesting? Because it really speaks to your character. <laughs> because for people who, you know, Such don't get to speak, don't have the privilege of speaking to you all the time, you're actually a really good person, really great man, I think. Thanks. And, um, and so that really speaks to your level of EQ because women generally don't like being scared, especially by their partner. And I had a partner who used to do that. And he used to say to me, you just can't take a joke. Although a little bit, you know, that's a little bit narcissistic, but it used to, it used to annoy him because I think that maybe guys do it, boys do it with each other, but we, I didn't like there's it at a all. Lot, there's a real line that you don't cross. And that was, I crossed that. was, the, you I crossed, crossed the line. line. I crossed the line. Yeah, and yeah. it took me a while to get back from that. I was Re like, okay, um, I guess one, that really puts a dampener on the hangout. <laughs> How old were you? Pretty young. Yeah. Oh, I think that was that was pretty much into us going out. So I was welcome there. 
I'm having that much. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't at that stage where her dad would come in the room and go, okay, fucking go home. Uh, yeah, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's late, go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to bed. You're yeah. leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing, which is fair enough. Now I, now I get it. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I just vowed never to scare again. And the other thing I don't, I'm 100% against is dacking because I don't like, I don't like, back to the uh, vanilla ice being dacked. Yeah. That's my other rule. I don't like dacking. Would well, you think though, I mean, because when we were growing up, it was a thing. It was And a also thing. wedging, like wedgie. Yeah, I don't like that either. And so there's these guys on, they do these reels. I think Shamu or Shumi or whatever the fuck his name is. There's a whole bunch of guys that do this kind of, you know, it's kind of a jackass kind of thing. Yep. Um, so they do these funny, well, I don't even sometimes find them funny. Like they might go up to another guy, grab a skateboard and when he's not like, you know, looking, you know, whack him in the shins or throw him in the pool or put yeah, hot see, sauce in their stuff, guys, right? Guys, guys to guys. Yeah, I'm just not into it. But in any case, I, sometimes I see it because to me fun. it's like, you know, you're trying to kill, like one guy I have to say, what they did was they sprayed, I don't even know where they find this stuff from. They sprayed a like really hot pepper spray, like it was a chili spray, no. Yep. They sprayed it on toilet paper and because they live in the Gold Coast, <laughs> they actually dried it, put it in the toilet and oh, this guy, oh, the guy was screaming. He was yeah. like, call an ambulance. Like, oh, look at him. Look yeah, at him. and it's he like... was and he's literally screaming. Because going, that's not going away. That's not going away. Anytime. But also, like, they not, nearly do kill people with the hot stuff. Like, it's, Yeah, that's fucked. They put, like, really hot chips, like, in the Doritos. There's the hottest chip in the world. <laughs> yeah. They put it in there and, look, like... <laughs> You know, yeah, see, you're laughing. I watch it going, how are they not going to kill these people? I, I'm, I'm laughing at in anticipation for the result. Oh, I right, right. Like the actual yeah, yeah, result. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it was the same with the dacking. Yeah. So, well, because the, they do the wedging and dacking too. But I drew, I drew the line. I drew the line at a friend of ours' sister came over and knocked on the door and came to the door. And as I came to the door, her brother, who's also a friend of ours, was, was arriving as well. So, so basically the brother and the sister arrived at the door at the same time as I opened it. Right. So I've opened the door to the sister and the brother that was approaching from behind dacked the sister. But do you know, I reckon I'd physically punch someone. And I fucking cracked the shit. Oh, see, because it's so humiliating, isn't it? But the sister was like, no, it's it's fine. I don't care. We dack each other all the time. Yeah, you're like. This is new fucking rule. (laughs) No fucking dacking. Because I couldn't. I didn't give a fucking shit that yeah. she didn't mind about it. Yeah. Didn't mind it. Yeah. yeah. Well, but like, I just, it's, it's so distasteful. Isn't it? So, oh, you, so can we explain to people what dacking is? we have is? pants. Yeah, exactly. Dacking is when you randomly go up behind somebody and pull their pants down. Pull their down. pants down. And it could go, it could go either way. It could go either way. It could yeah. be full dacking down to. Oh, like down to the nudie, down to nudie the humiliation. Yeah, yeah. So, or it could be just like, <laughs> look at his, look at his undies. Yeah. So that happened to me, but very publicly. <laughs> it's a fucking nightmare. Do you remember Heat Nightclub and yeah. the Odeon? So George Capanaris used to play in a band with the guy from Onion Skin. What right. the hell is that guy's name? John Stevens. John. Yeah. John oh, St- Onion Skin. Okay. Sure. Walking around. Yep. So they used to have this band, and we used to go see them all the Let's time. See if I've got it. A... And we got to. Have you got Onion Skin? No, that's where. Where. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's humiliating. No, it's not. Wham's great. So, um, Wham, wham, I swear I am a man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I swear. Uh, I swear. So you're there. So I'm there. And we got to know, like, back in the day, it wasn't like now we, they would come out and have drinks, like they'd come off the stage, have drinks with us and okay. blah, blah, blah. It was an odd time that they needed to lift home. It was, it was different. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. very... I don't Lo- know. Localized. Like, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, so they pulled me up on the stage to dance <laughs> okay. or whatever. Cool. And another mm-hmm. guy, and the guy came behind me and tried to dack me. On stage? On stage. But what happened was, I, I don't know what, I've always had this real energy about me. And I actually remember it was a fight because I was holding my pants up. He was trying to actually rip them down because he was this drunk guy. And in the end, Did, did yeah. you know who the guy was? Are you going to look at him up and I find him? I want to fucking find the prick. Yeah, no, I have no idea who it was. <sighs> And it was and it was so humiliating. Yeah. I remember, even though like it, um, even though he didn't actually succeed in what he was doing, but I remember no, it's the attempt to to it's the it's the takedown that I don't like. Yeah, right. It's it's the same. Um, there was a there was a thing. 
if people would invade your personal space, it would never have happened to you, but someone would go, oh, you, you idiot. And then, oh, and push punch, you. like push you in, push the, head. in the head? No, it's but like, you know oh, what I did get smack in the back of the head? Well, fuck that. Yeah, I think any of that kind of, because there is something very... It's past the barrier. Yeah, I past think so. Past the personal barrier. Do you know what was big though? I fucking don't like But it. another thing back in the day, because I don't know if people do jacking anymore, but... um, Fucking better not. You've but kick in, the, kick in the ass. Kick in the ass. A kick in a, the a, ass. A, a side yeah. friendly like. Yeah, like a kick in the bum, which I always hate. It's a very, I don't know, it was a very thing like. It's the, is that, is that, that comes off the back of the old kick me sign. Yeah. And they, they, they go, hey, how you going, buddy? And stick a kick me. Yeah, yeah. But and I then think. And walking it's through school and people would kick you. Kind of humiliation, isn't it? But yeah, dackings are big. But they do it on these, these guys do it. And they also do the wedgie. Yeah, so the, the but the, the wedges, atomic wedgies atomic that they wedges, do. Like, it like looks. Like they ripped it. Pants right up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. But that must be so of painful. Is. Of course it is. I've, I mean, I've never, I mean, it doesn't really happen to women. I've never seen a woman do Fucking it. Fucking better not. Well, here's the thing. Why do <laughs> men do it though? Because you never see women actually doing these. But I've never been pranked by a female friend in my life. Men, yes, but I've never been pranked by a woman and certainly never had a woman. I'm just going back through my archives of when I used to be. Because I was, I was from an all boys school, so right. that that behaviour was rife. So what is it about? So what? what, what? So so there was, a, there was we had a thing called Friday tie day, right? Right, and there was there was a couple of different methods because we all used to wear ties at school. Yeah. The, the the passive method in a, in a V neck similar to this, yeah. that you just go flip, and then you pop the f- the tie out, the tie out Friday tie day, right? But then people started going with scissors and then going up and going snip. Oh. And cutting the tie that turned into Friday tie day. Then it was, then it was yank, yanking it, <gasps> and it was like, oh god! When, when those things go tight, it's it's, it's, all, it's all like you have to get scissors, like right. Bad. But are you choking at this stage? Or? Yeah, yeah. You are. Yeah, yeah. But then there was then there was incessant wrestling. There was because it's it's ugh, school is so boring. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting you to say that school is so. Yeah, it is. It's bad. It is. But but, it's uh, bad. but do you think though, when it comes to young men or men in general, it's this thing like, what's the fucking thought process where you go? You know what I think would be really funny if I yanked on that person's tire, I chopped it off, well, or I cut his hair. Into, or... I don't know, but we got into a we got into a taxi, going to like revolve or something one night about twenty years ago, and the taxi driver recognised me. Are you, are you, are you... You, Tim, from Solution College. I'm like, oh, you're yeah. like, uh, oh. and he said, oh man, you know, I've, I've really got to, I've really got to say, like, you know, really, really, really bullied you heaps, and um, came, I, I had no idea who this dude oh was. Oh my god, he must have thought I was the guy he was bullying because I never got, I never got bullied. Do, I, I don't do remember you, getting. Do bullied. you think you've actually just suppressed no, I, that? I don't memory. remember. Because he said... I we can't used to imagine with five brothers that you'd be bullied because the whole fucking clan would go up. No, you'd, you'd, yeah, you'd know something would be done about it. Oh, actually, I did get bullied when I was in year seven. I had a hard time from a year 12 student. It was the taxi driver. It w- no, it wasn't him. Oh. It wasn't him. I'll go back I'll go back to that in a second. Yeah. So he he said, oh, we used to hang out at the school board and we'd call you over. And I, I, t- I totally don't remember it. I think he's remembered my name remembered me from that group and he must have been harassing somebody else from that group. Yeah, just right. Like, just like associated because I really do not remember. And I just went along. I just went along with it. Are you yeah, like, oh, yeah, no, no worries, man. man. No, no. no, it never affected me. No. Yeah. Boys will be boys. <laughs> and made out so that he had closure. Yeah. Oh, that's but good But then when, I got, when we got out of taxi, I'm like, like, I sit still. I go, oh, I have a fucking clue. I didn't recognize him. <laughs> I can't even remember who I hung out with. <laughs> I don't remember names. You, that's amazing. There's a few names I remember, but mm. like, no, nah, I just. Do you have any, like, I know, I think there's another story in there, but there was. Do, you, do you want to tell it first? I'm going to ask you this question. Yeah. So, so year 12 student and I can't even remember what he looked like or anything like that. I remember he was a lot bigger and there was two, like, if I, if, if I made eye contact with this guy, he would sort of like try and. Try and harass me or whatever. Mm, it's a little bit and primal, told, isn't it? It's like it looking is. into a dog's oh, I, eyes. I, I knew it was. I knew that it was just that. So I, I said it. Said told dad about it. Just said, oh, what, what do I do? And dad, dad used to be into 
into karate. He made it to brown belt or whatever. Yeah. And he just said, he said fucking hit him. Yeah, smack his... Boom. Hit him. Just mm. wait wait for the exactly the right time and mm. then just pop him. him. Yeah, yeah, just pop him. So there were two toilet blocks. One was like more of a secluded down the back of the school yep. vibe, which Shelter I preferred shed, yep. to go to because I hate... I detest urinals. Yeah, you've, we've, we've yeah, discussed we've talk, this. Yeah, we've talked about that. I don't like... I mean, who's going to stand at a wall pissing? See... Well, we're, we can go back into that. We're going to um, have to... Can we... <laughs> we need to bookmark urinals <laughs> and... Oh, my God, I forgot my question. Oh, yeah, do you know anyone from high school now with the two? Yeah, okay, urinals. Yeah, cool. Okay, yeah. Okay, and the answer to that is no. Okay. Um, and, <laughs> Me either. And I ended up... I I was coming into the into the block and this guy was coming out. I was like, oh, fuck. No, don't look in his then eyes. No one's around. Yeah. And he had no reason, he had no reason to harass me yeah. apart from the fact that he kind of had to because he had Because he's an been. asshole, yeah. And I just, I just remember just going, all right, this is it. And I just like clocked this dude and like hit him like. Really fucking hard. Yeah, right. In the face. And it, and it, and it knocked the year 12 out of him. Yeah, right. So he just, he just had just Tweety thought, Birds going around yeah, his head. and he just, he, he obviously just went, oh shit, I was not expecting to get smacked out by year, year seven kid. Yeah, had enough. And yep. then I never saw, heard of him ever, ever again. again. That was yeah. it. That was yeah. the end of it. Yeah. And that was the way to sort it out. Yeah. In I had to do that in primary school. Yeah. Just hit someone. I had to beat a girl up because I was, I was, <laughs> well, I was really mercilessly bullied in primary school i was the only brown-skinned kid in a school of all white kids like yeah. very aussie it was yeah. it was more bark it, it was, was a bit like more very of a division as well with massive and it was huge <laughs> it was just me and i'll never ever forget another girl and i don't know I've, you know i've actually wanted to try and find her on facebook i don't know her name's probably different now but i never forgot her name because her name was Faye shamoon and we used to call her shamooni bug yeah. but that's not I mean, she was... And you smacked her in the face, huh? No, no, I didn't. She oh. was actually Lebanese. So between... We were the only two kids that got the shit kicked out of us in primary school yeah. because we were the only dark-skinned. I mean, they considered me quite dark-skinned and she was very dark-skinned compared to me. And I remember... I mean, I got... I remember being stabbed with grey lead pencils. Like, literally, they would be yeah. sticking out. Like, it was awful. Yeah. And I remember one day, um, there was a girl... Her name was uh, Nicole and she just used to... It was years and years and years of being bullied and harassed and harangued and years. And I remember, so I was in grade four and I remember saying, that's it, like I'm fucking done. And so after school, I beat the living shit out of her. And Wicked. and that was it. That was yeah. the end of it. So yeah. yeah, that was the end. Yeah, don't fuck with me. I had enough by that stage and yeah. I've never laid hands on anyone. Like I've never had to do it since, not in high school, never. But it was just this relentless, relentless, relentless being, you know, persecuted for really... Fucking nothing. nothing. And when I look back at those photos of me as a, a kid, I look back at my primary school photos, you can see it behind my eyes, like the pain. Yeah. Like I was in a lot of emotional pain. And my parents, who were migrants to this country, you know, they, they didn't know back then. To, I used to, I remember coming home crying every day, but back then, you know, working, they were both working. They yeah, didn't a shocking have... case of fuck this place. Pardon? A shocking case of fuck yeah, this place. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Which is what I had at school as well. Yeah, I yeah. I had to... I remember going. Really, is that I remember a full the full countdown going. Wow, seven years left, five years left. I remember doing that. Yeah, yeah. Every year, just like not, not going into a year or going into a year, um, with the excitement that it was one year less that I had to. See, isn't that interesting? Because in primary school, and I went to a Catholic primary school, of course, I re I would tell the teachers what was happening to me, and they would say to me, "You're just telling fibs." Yeah, and I didn't right. know what the word fibs meant. I had no idea what the fuck <laughs> they were saying. Because I come from a quintessentially Italian family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had never heard the word fibbing. I knew what lying meant. But they were like, they kept saying to me, you're just telling fibs, like get back into the classroom. And years later, I remember years later thinking to myself, you bastards. Yeah. Because no one was hearing my cry for help, really. Yeah. And I remember, because, you know, in, we, in Catholicism, you do your communion, you do your confirmation and all of that. And in grade six, when we did our, is it confirmation or whatever? Yeah, confirmation, yeah, confirmation I think. Confirmation grade six, yeah. Yeah, um, I remember the priest um, sitting there, he would, he'd interviewed us all. And I remember him saying, are you, you know, are, do you have any friends? Like, are you happy to be here? And I said, no, I can't wait to leave. Yeah. And, and I remember years later thinking it really had an impact on my faith. Because when you're a kid and you grow up in like the Catholic Catholicism, 
you equate everything that's happening to you as God, like for me, because I was in a Catholic yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. So I went for years actually loathing religion and loathing the idea of a God that could be allow me to be so punished. Yeah. I mean, as I grew well, up... You ran, you ran out of cheeks to turn. I ran out of cheeks to turn. It's exactly what happened. Yeah, it's like, when when is this going to, like, you're doing the... The holy thing, yeah, yeah, as you've been taught, and it just doesn't really forgiveness, forgive you, you know, forgive, yeah, forgive but then, those then that the final line between um, forgiveness and raw abuse <laughs> is an eye for a friggin' eye, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At the yeah, end of the day, you're like, you know, f- for me, it was I, I went for years until my 20s before I figured out that faith and religion are two different things, yeah. But I really, it was such a big deal for me. And so, yeah, I really think that's interesting because you as well, like had that experience, but yeah, boys school. but then I was just trying to get, I was trying to get through it. I remember, um, never really liking having to be somewhere that wasn't really my choice. It was just this necessity that you had to do. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Cause I remember, I uh, remember go- it being a kinder and mm. like, <clears throat> Going to going to the, the the toilets there, and then locking the door, and then wishing that the the, the cubicle was a portal that I that when I opened the door I could just be home. Wow! And then I just sort of never got past wanting to be somewhere else. So interesting. <laughs> so because this was in the toilets, right? Yeah. Is this because we've talked about this before? Because like I can imagine, is it even as a young boy like quite intimidating? Going to, do they have urinals? What the hell yeah, goes yeah, on there? Yeah, yeah, at at um, Salesian they had like a forty foot urinal. Ugh, yeah, I know, disgusting. Yuck, it's disgusting. I do. I've said this to you, like to people, like you know, do they look down? <laughs> do you look at each other? I don't personally, but people do. Oh, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. I do. Because you'd have to think, not that that's not that that's a um, a homosexual tendency or anything. But you'd have to think that at an all boys school, yeah, it'd have to be. What do you reckon? Twenty percent would have to be persuaded over to the. Um, but do you reckon it even as a? Be. But but even as a just a like because if you go into the change rooms like women's change rooms in in you know in the gyms, swimming pools. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Like I mean, it's pretty commonplace. I mean, what will happen is women will turn their backs to each other and get changed and whatever. Okay. Or you can go into the actual shower or toilet if you're feeling. But it's like not, I don't know if it's a big of a deal. Yeah. If you walk I up just, to someone well, and you've it's, got it's no clothes like, on. It's like, um, say we'd, we'd go to the pools as a kid and, and we would have to be, dad would have to be in there because there's too many creeps. Yeah, yeah, right. And too many nude creeps. Yeah, right. Okay, got you. Know you. I mean? so, oh, really? Yeah. And, this and is an you insight. Know how, you know how creepy some old men at the yeah, pools could be. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, mum and dad were always quite, quite careful and aware of everything. We were never, we were never on our own, basically. So, would you have older brothers, like, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's always, it was always a, um... A chaperone. Chaperone, that's yeah, the word. Yeah, yeah, a chaperone. Yeah, yeah. So, it's so interesting, isn't it? Because, like, and I guess that's part of the reason why we have, you know, exclusive children only, Yep. Either children, we, we're really covered our children and women's only spaces. Yeah, well, we come from a crook time. Well, <laughs> we're All really that fucking crazy shit that was happening back then. Yeah, it's true. Well, that's true. Permitted and, yeah, and like overlooked and, you know, the kids didn't have much of a voice. It was just like, just, just put up with it, true. you know, harden up or yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk grow it off. up as, as part of life or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, so part of life was just like the distaste for, for school. Yeah, yeah. You know. But you went to an all-boys school, so it must have been like, because in that all-boy, because I, I kind of envisage it like Lord of the Flies. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it is It is a bit, uh, when you get older, it's a bit like that. Is it? Yeah, in the later years. Do you, and do you reckon it's like alpha male syndrome? Like what is, because oh, yeah. I would, I mean. Bulldogs. Yeah, right. Because I, I would. I found it really interesting in my life, right, with my partners, that they are so different with me. Like, you're all pussycats, really. Mm. Like, when you're at home with your partners, your wives, um, and I'm obviously talking about heterosexual relationships here, but real pussycats are really lovely. Men are really 
gorgeous at home, really lovely. They mind their P's and Q's. They speak to you nicely. Well, most should. Yeah. But, but, and they have with me. But then when they're at work, like I'll ring them on the phone, I'll ring them on the phone and they're talking to me at work. <laughs> they change. Yeah. They completely. And I'm like, who are you talking to? He's like, ah, he's just such a. It's and just, they, da- just done Yeah. yeah and it's it like that. We, they, we they have, can, it's, they it's complete. Switch. It's a ham up. Yeah, it's they switch. Up. And I, and I said to my ex, I said, what? Why do you do that? And he goes, because I have to show them that I'm not weak. I guess if you, have to, partic- if you have to analyze it, it's like... I do have to. Yeah, but I think it's just like a, a, a strong set mode to get the job done. Just a bunch of blokes working and getting shit done. This is on... A, let's just say this is tradies and all. Yeah, I, I tra- it is, because that's yeah, what I'm you kind can't, of... Yeah. I, can't, I can't go... Oh. I was saying to Vanessa yesterday that like I come home, I'm so sore. Like I'll get through eight hours of a full workout at work, mm. and then I'll be sore and tired at the end of the day. Mm. But I could, I could push fifty, sixty wheelbarrows during the day, mm. you know. And that's because there's other blokes working, and we don't spend the whole time going, "Oh, this is hard. No, give me half a load." Give me, a, you know. I know. But here's you just the get thing. the shit done because the sooner you get it done, the sooner we can get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I know. But here's the thing. It's not particularly... Because I don't know if that would change if you're on a work site with women. What I'm saying is you relate to each other differently than you relate to I've women. Found that, I've found that oh, they'll yeah. tolerate more of a, of a like joke environment or fucking around. Because it is. Because I because to me... Lots more swearing. It's it's offensive to my ear holes. I don't like it at all. Okay. The way that men relate to each other, usually on works, because I've got tradies in my family. It, do, it doesn't And it switches. Me. It's just yuck. But that's, and that's also the same fucking thing boring. With, um, what with, do you guys talk about? Boring ah, shit. It's fucking boring. It's boring. Yeah, it's boring. It's like, oh, me fishing, me friggin', I don't know, although, boats, although caravans, it, fishing. It does, if you're around the right blokes, it's... Funny story topped by a funny story topped by a oh, funny that, story. Well, that would that's, be that's good fun. That would be an Irishman, an Englishman, and a yeah, it is. Person. It is a bit. It is a yeah. bit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walking yeah. to a pub. And, yeah, 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 and all get along well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just in response to, do I see anybody from from school? Yeah. No, because because, everyone... because I don't like. I like being able to become what what I what I intend, intended for myself to become. Right, and you I see get it, old I get friends, it. there's a thing that is, you they kind They pigeonhole of, you. Well, you kind of go back to where you were with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's this expectation of like, oh, uh, you know, you're this way or that way, whatever whatever it is. It just it doesn't really, it never really sat well with me to have to go back to a mode that I was, to a time where I wasn't 100% comfortable. Yeah, you know, like, um, for example, like, I was always into hip hop, but all my mates were into heavy metal. Yeah. So I kind of had to reluctantly pretend to like heavy, heavy metal. metal, which, you know, I like a lot about it, Mm-mm-mm. but I didn't want it. You know, when, when you're at school, like the thing you're into sort of defines your image. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So music was a big, was a big player and, mm. um, you know, like you're either a bogan or a skeg or yeah, a, yeah, a skater or a skater or a, skater or a writer or yeah, 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 like yeah. one of those kind of things, theater kids or whatever. And I liked elements of each, but you but you had to. You had to pick. Become, you, had to, beca- you had to pick. You had to pick. You had to pick. You weren't yeah. like couldn't be a chameleon. You had to pick. Yeah. Yeah, and and my mates, my mates like karate and like kicking around and and wrestling and all that kind of shit. I fucking hated it. Oh my god, I, yeah. I already hate it for you. Yeah. Ugh. So I was happy to get out of there, and and, and like after school, there was um like in the years later, I, I did hang out with with a couple of key people, but mainly um. They sort of drop off after a while because you've just you've you've had you've had your time with them. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. You gotta move on, and do other shit. I agree. I don't hang out with anyone from high fucked. school. What are you going to talk about? I don't know. I remember that time. <laughs> no. Because some people are still really good friends with their high school friends, and I find that interesting. It is Vanessa and her friends. They went to Sacred Heart, and they had a pretty strong community oh. of chicks. Yeah. But a really good year level. Yeah, yeah, where right. all the chicks were, like, actually pretty cool. Yeah, right. So she got good luck of the draw. Right. Um, I got thrown in with a bunch of dead shits. Right. Um, and then I probably should have been in the year later. Like, I got put into school a year earlier because I was at the cutoff, you know, when they yeah. say. Yeah, yep. I think I think the cutoff is, like, May 
and I was third of June. So they were like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that little difference yep, yep. made a big difference. Made a big difference. It's sort of like trying to keep up the entire time. If yeah. I was in the year later, I would have had more of a chance of being academic, but less, even less of a good time because I, because looking back, <clears throat> the year level that was younger than us, I don't think I would have got along with anybody in that year level. Like yeah. The demographic, not... I preferred to be around older people. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I do. It's like, yeah. But, um, and then I got offered to, I got offered to stay back a year. Like mum and dad said, do you want to, do you want to stay back a year? And I was just like. No fucking way. Fuck that. I'm not That's fucking... a weird offer. No, well it's, it's like, you either stay, stay back to do better and, sh- and struggle less, but then have to stay there for an extra year. The thing I is. I never would have made it through. The thing for me about school is apart from it being like a babysitting, you know, for, for children, for young people. Yeah. Um, part of it for me that I find really interesting is it really doesn't matter as much as people say. No. So, so, um, like, you know, my daughter's in high school and it's like, they've actually got parent teacher interviews today, which I didn't book to do any. And I said, oh, I don't need to, I know what how you're going. Well, it's fine. Yeah. What are you going to do? That's what I'm going to ask them. She in, like, I said, it's fine. I see. What, and by the way, they don't even teach you how to fucking spell. So I don't even know what I'm going to ask them. Like the, big, the biggest thing that. Is that used to be said when um, I, the parent teacher interviews back in my day were an opportunity for the teacher to put me in the spot in front of my parents, yeah, for me to have to admit, yeah, that what you're I've a, been doing you're wrong. a naughty boy, you're yeah, a naughty boy. And the, the biggest thing they used to say what, to mum, their biggest criticism of me, yeah, was he's too creative. Oh, okay, and I was just like. That's my best fucking bit. That's exactly. And I think that that's... So now they call them student-led interviews. So they're not parent-teacher, student-led interviews. Oh, whatever. But um, but in any case, I agree with that. It's like they're coming to tell you like kind of what they, you know, they want to pick something. Mm. But I mean, that's the thing. It's high school, so unless you want to go on to university and you need that ATAR score or whatever the fuck score they call it now... Um, really, does it matter in the scheme of life? Not really, because you can go back to university as a mature age student anyway. And I remember in my at my high school, there were young people that really, because it was, we were the first year they did the common assessment tasks, yeah, the cats. Yeah, yeah. We were the first year to do it. So they, they weren't sure about how much was too much or too little. They didn't okay. have the, and we were so bombarded in that year, like our, that, that year, 1996 or whatever it was, 1995, like all the high schools. That people, kids actually, you know, went to extremes to get out of it. Like it was bad, bad news. Like it was, it wasn't good. And I just remember thinking, this can't be that frigging important. No. And the the one thing, my biggest gripe was we got to the end, um, end of our sort of year 11, year 12, where you sort of had to say, okay, do you want to go on to uni or what do you want to do? So you got, you got a one-on-one with the counsellor who was there, careers counsellor. Yeah. And, um, I just remember, and I still, I still suffer from it today, even though I know, I know who I am and what I am now. Yeah, yeah, right. But, um, there was this massive pressure on what are you going to do? Yeah, massive. What are you going to be? It was huge. And I can never, and like, even now it's, I know that that's, that's a mental block for me. Like if I have to, let's just say I just quit all this shit. And I had to go apply for a job Mm-mm. and you had to list your qualifications yeah. and that kind of shit. I, I wouldn't know where the fuck to start. Yeah, right. Where, where to even start looking. Isn't that interesting? Because there's this, there's this block. There's, the, there's a physical block where I can't see past um, past the idea of, of having an open open book policy. Yeah, you know right. I mean? like, Got like, you. Like, Not I, being like, pigeonholed into yeah, your lawyer. Yeah, I like, having, I like baker. having open, open options. Open options, Being yeah. creative. Coming up with my own ideas, self-employed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I liked, at that stage when we did the careers thing, it was, um, she said, oh, what are you into? I said, well, special effects. And then she's like, oh, okay. What else? Animation. Uh, 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 okay. At that stage, I, I was, I should have gone into, um, I think at that stage it was called multimedia. Yeah, it was. Which was like web design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that kind of stuff, making videos. All of, Now I know. Yeah. I wanted to be a content creator. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to learn animation. I wanted to work in film or yeah. television on yeah. some capacity. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, and I just remember being tormented over not 
knowing knowing what I liked and what I wanted, but there was never a there was never a title for but, it. And they're right, so I couldn't right. seek it out. Right, right. And now now I know what I wanted. I wanted YouTube. Yep. To learn, and like change it up and have like my own algorithm where I could. Yeah. You know, learn something new. Learn yep. how to play violin if I fucking want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, content creation. Yep. Music. Yeah. Which is endless. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, running running a studio, and <clears throat> now now I know what even. It's even more defined into where it's sort of going now, which is more like music therapy, where I'll have one on one with people and then doing doing stuff like um getting somebody in here that's you know, like ten, fifteen stages behind where I where I'm at. Yeah. And then helping them get something done creatively. Yeah. Content, you know, learn a new technique. Yep, yep. Observe by example. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then and then skip all the bullshit. Yeah. And I think I think here's the thing, like you were like thirty years ahead of your time. Always am. Yeah, always. Similarly, like I'm a oh, visionary. You know, in thirty years we're gonna wear our hats like this. <laughs> yeah, so you watch. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. It's like I, I understand that. And so when because there was so much emphasis put on you need to know what you want to do when you leave school, which is kind of ridiculous when you think about that for the yeah, rest I of your life. Yeah, I thought that was fucked up. I thought it was fucked up too. But here's the thing. Now, think about back then, even the subjects that were offered weren't really like, now they can do anything. Like now young people, in year, they're doing, I mean, my daughter did uh, year nine last year, but she was doing some year 10 subjects. I said, great. So when you're in fucking year 12, they're going to do some uni subjects. Yeah. Like they're ahead of themselves is what yeah. I mean to say. But also, um, but also they get so like they, they've, at her school, they've got a gym. You can do, you know, uh, what's it called? PE. You can do trainer. You can become anything you really want. But there's, but there's not so much emphasis, I don't think, on what are you going to do for the rest of your life because those jobs don't exist anymore. No, they're all gone. No yeah. one, no one stays in one job for forty years and gets the bloody watch and the golden handshake. Do you no, know what I mean? No. So, so I think that, so for you back then, there was no. They couldn't. You wouldn't say, "I want, I want to be an artist or something." They'd say, "Well, go get a fucking real job." Yeah, yes, and then no so money, get no. get a real job, and then that can be your hobby. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, which I which I do find myself saying that to my daughter, who's, who's artistic and um, creative, that, um, and, and it is kind of important in a way that <clears throat> you work towards what interests you. And then you let that eventually take over. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to keep yourself afloat somehow. Sure. So don't avoid getting a job because... Of course. You know, yeah, yeah. Because you need but, certain levels of experience but, with other people and... But you know what, fucking though? do you? Well, but here's the thing. <laughs> I mean, I've got a niece who's, who's a lawyer. Yep. And when she first, you know, started, she worked in a kebab store. Then she worked in a friggin' shoe store. And I remember saying to her, and she was com- coming to the end of her um, Juris Doctor, she was finishing it, she was going to go get her, they don't call it the bar here, but go to Supreme Court and get her licence. And um, and she's like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, am I going to go, am I going to, because it's very hard for graduates to get jobs, like yeah. law graduates, actually. Oh, it's going to be massive competition. Yeah, heaps. So I said to her, you know what you do? I said, when you are w- at work, you talk about, like, because in a shoe store, hi, how are you going? What are you looking for today? Blah, blah, blah. I said, look at the people who, who are looking at this particular style of shoe because yep. she worked in a very high-end shoe store. Yep. And I said, start saying, oh, yeah, I've just finished study. Start talking about it. I said, you will end up networking. And you know what? The, not even a couple of days later, I reckon it was about three days later, she rang me and she said, I. she met a, a woman who ran a women-only law firm in the city and she freaking hired her. Wicked. And I said to her, I told, it's not, it's not what you know, it's who you know, it's networking. I'm doing this, yeah, I'm doing also, that. It's also turning up so that. Exactly. So, that's such and a there's good, this, yeah. yeah. There's a whole thing about, um, everybody's expecting to be discovered. Yeah. And yep. it's not until you put yourself in the situation that. Absolutely. You become discoverable. If exactly. You have to. But, but in doing that. Don't wait for somebody to make you an offer because it, it never comes. No, exactly. You know? So it's about having that. T- for me, it's about having that tenacity. But I think it's something that we had because we needed to. I'm not sure about these days because of social media and TikTok fame. I was watching. I got an ad last night about. I don't know if you know who um, Margulies, Mar- Marion Margulies is. She was in that. Harry Potter. Okay. She's an actress. She's um, Hermione. 
No, she, M- Miriam, she's an older lady. She okay. was um one of the professors, Professor okay. blah, 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 whatever her name was. Lugensplogen. Yeah, exactly. Um, She <laughs> was the plant lady. But anyway, she's been in many, many, many films. She started her career like 60 years. She's 77 or something. Okay. Um, She's really part of the UK. Anyway, her, um, she's on the Graham Norton show all the time. She's a very interesting woman because she's she studied <coughs> at Cambridge or Oxford or one of them. She's very... Speaks with a plum in her mouth, but yeah. she's so funny and she's very um, almost to the point of not uncouth, but in a way that she says it in, with a plum in her mouth. She's hilarious. But she came, she did a, a, a tour of Australia and she meets this young influencer guy. I've never seen him before, but he comes up to her and she goes, what do you do? And he goes, I'm an influencer. She goes, who do you influence? dressed like that because you know he's outlandish yeah. and I, I he may be gay I'm not sure but he seemed very camp and yeah. and he, she, he goes all I have to do is you know I post photos of myself and I influence people with fashion and I've got I don't know 15 million followers whatever it was and she goes is that all you do and you got to think she's 77 yeah. years old or 80 years old she's been in the industry for ages and she goes so all you do is have a really baseless life like you go around and take photos of yourself and he goes yeah yeah like and, and, and cool with it imagine saying that to your career's counselor well here's the thing oh, but, i just want to take photos of myself and show off and and the thing <laughs> is but he influences people so he's saying but people will buy the clothes that i wear and she just could not but and i love it because she's very old school and she was just like is that it that's yeah, all but you that do is also that's it's clever because it's tapping into the fact that people are fucked in their head yeah and, yeah. They, and they they need they need to be told. They need to be shown. It's like a lot of people don't have the balls to put themselves out there. Yeah. So they go and find somebody that's doing it and then imitate it. Yeah. Yeah. Good I mean? point. That's, good point. It's like a, I've got a reference point now. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So and I find that a lot in in music where I'll say. take a lot of yeah. I'll take a lot of liberties. Person. Yeah. 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 And then and because one thing that I always was a little bit um, jealous of was the fact that. Um, some people could put music out and it was so simplistic and so obvious that no one would ever think of it. And I, and I was very envious of the fact that you could just go, you could just go kick snare and it was, it was how you presented those kicks and Can snares. you give an example of that while I look to see if my sister's actually answered, she's answered. Um, I'd, um, just, just stripping music back, not overcomplicating it, not having... Like if if it was a band scenario, yep. not having six members of a band, having three, yeah, yeah, and still right, still getting a big sound, and and like less people to deal with, less complicated, clever in its in, in its execution, yeah, and and unexpectedly bigger than you would you, than you would think if it was just like yeah a small amount of people, and I always liked um, Lenny Kravitz because he. He was the guy that would yeah. have his own recorder and be every be every instrument. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. do all the. And I really liked the idea of cutting away the bullshit, having to work with a heap of people and coordinate a bunch of things to get to get something happening that would not really go there, or being yeah. able to do it on your own and throw a million ideas at the wall, and then be able to move on and not have to answer to anybody. Yeah, right. Gotcha. And that and, that, and that's where the simplicity is working working alone in in my own personal music is is fun because there's 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 no one to say don't do that don't do it oh and all because you do your you do i'm just gonna turn my there we go that's better you do your um you do your uh like little the last one you did was so good what did you do the last one Uh, would i lie to you would i lie to you charles and eddie it was great i gotta give jazzbot props for that yeah sometimes he throws throws some ideas some of the best ideas yeah i really loved that so you do your own little so Timmy Taco does his own little uh, remixes yeah. of a classic. Oh, so on Instagram, and I do a I do a um, crossover with with video as well. With video, so it's like the ultimate um, content you... creation for me because I do because in one window I do it live. So the little bit of me DJing is me actually recording it live. Yeah, in one, I love that. Take. And then I sync up the video from the song I'm remixing to the audio. Yeah. <clears throat> so then I get I get Instagram content. It's DJing. I can show off me actually doing it. Yeah. can see it's happening and, and it's interesting and engaging because it's 80s. And I love it. Well, it's 80s for now. So it is going to evolve. But um, yeah, what where were we going with that? We were saying... Oh, just um, with 
you know, because you were talking about... Oh, reconstituting the, the idea? Or oh, what? no, you because I was talking about the content creator and you were saying some people need to have, like, um, you know, imitate it. And I think for you, I feel like for you, you're that original, you know, you've I been... I like to innovate it yeah, you're, rather in, than yeah, imitate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, But there is a level of imitation on there. Like, I know that I have to um, take a couple of threads of appeal... So I know within that DJing, there's there's stuff that would go over people's heads, but I know that other DJs would go, oh yeah, that's clever. Do yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's a ma- it's a matter of knowing knowing who your audience are. I get a lot of that from just reading the room, from DJing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the demographics, and that um, like I'd put my own music out for years, and you beg people to listen to it. And no one shares stuff, and they they're not interested. Yeah. Or they're like, oh, they're 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 taken care of. I don't need to share. And- but you know what else I think it is, um, Tim? It's nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd. So yeah. what I do is, like, if I have like a Facebook story that heaps of people like and love, and then you see all the little love hearts fly up. I will um, screen record that and put that on TikTok, yeah, and it gets yeah, because you need to see that. Yeah. So what happens is when it goes on TikTok. People go, oh my god! People like what she's doing, so they're more in. Nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd. But what happens is, if I do it without that, nothing. No one will say anything. No, they don't want to be the first. They don't. Yeah. No so, one wants to be the first one in your live stream. And I think, then how do you get out of it? <laughs> but but I think too, like some of the stuff that actually gets heaps of con, like heaps of clicks. You think, what the fuck is going on here? But I think it's that snowball effect. Do you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Yeah. I'm just gonna. I know we've got to finish up. Um, That's all right, just making sure that things still recording. It yep, is. yep. Um, so I did message my sister about uh, did, uh, yeah. about Robert Wozniacki, whatever his name is. Van Winkle. But, yeah, that's the one. Uh, I said, and this is what I said. I said, you know how you saw Vanilla Ice in concert? Well, did he get dacked at that concert? And it's great because she knows what dacked means. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a podcast and we want to know if you got dacked. Yeah. No, not at the Cairns concert. So she was at the Cairns. Oh, I was Cairns, in the front right. row. And he got heaps of bottles of water and sprayed us all. Great concert. He signed my CD that I have in the lounge room. <laughs> he said, oh, my God, this is old school. And he, I think he wrote, what's <laughs> And I don't know why because her name's got nothing, doesn't start with W. Well, that'd be what's up. What's uh, up? What's up? Oh, there Remember we go. That, oh. that was a TV commercial popular at the time. I'm going to let her know because we wouldn't have got we wouldn't have got that um okay. reference. I had no idea. So um so no she Okay, she, so there was cans. Cans. She okay, didn't I don't think it was quite. If anyone cans. wonders what I'm doing, oh, my little feet is I don't hit the ground, so it's like I'm just Yeah. <laughs> it's so cute. Remember Lily Tomlin used to <laughs> used to do that routine when she was a little girl on a massive chair? <laughs> saw yesterday <laughs> so i was driving home. i don't know why this actually what you just did sparked this uh idea like this memory so i was driving home from the beach yesterday or the bitch as my mum would say <laughs> and um i went to the beach for a little bit and then i was on my way home so i was crossing the Pean highway right yep. so i am actually on the road i'm i don't even know north road wherever i was and i'm crossing the Pean highway and at the lights there was a guy on a penny farthing Oh yeah. Do you know what you know the, yeah, the, the big wheel, the pig, big wheel, little wheel. Yeah, stupid looking. And and he was actually um. He was going, oh <laughs> fuck, <laughs> help! <laughs> that's why we're going. No. <laughs> well, that's what I thought was happening because yeah. he was. I was a couple of cars behind the first car. I thought this guy's gonna fall. I don't know if he was trying to cross oh. the road. Anyway, as he walks off, I realised to my left there was a big bag. Um, and I thought this is weird. What's that big red bag doing there? And he walks when the car started to go. He walked around getting money off people. He was a, he was a clown. He was actually juggling oh, on the okay. goddamn penny farthing. Oh, okay, so it was a, it was part of his routine. It was part of his part routine, of and I thought this is really fascinating. I I didn't get that. I thought, what the fuck is going on here? Imagine inventing that. I've, you've been so close to inventing the bike, <laughs> but you just go. Nah, I reckon it's got to be bigger. <laughs> And I need to be three meters in the air. How the fuck do you get up there? Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Wait, wait. Okay, all right. One tiny, one big. Yeah. I'll compromise. Well, it was probably the price of metal. How the fuck do you get on them? I don't know how they get on them. That's a great question. Should we Google that? I want to know how do you get on a penny farthing? Is that what they call them? Yeah, it's just going to say, don't. Now you know how to do it, don't. Because I don't know how they get on there either. I have no idea, but I think You'd that it's... You have to have a fucking... 
and because it's one step ladder, but then <laughs> hang on, you how keep do people step ladder away? How how do people get up onto? Do you want to know what it says? It just says get up early, get up in the morning. How do people get up oh, from bungee jump? These are the jump? questions I ask. Yeah, yeah, get up. Um, you would never bungee jump, would you? No. Nah. No, nah, fuck that. Do you know why I never went for a bungee jump? I used to be quite like, when I was younger, I was a li- little bit more of a risk taker. Like, I'd do stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, I went to New Zealand, went on the shot over jet, blah, okay. blah, went up the side of a fucking mountain, only shit my pants in this bloody yeah. elevator, whatever. But you do stuff, right? But then I remember in my 20s, I wanted to go bungee jumping. I was speaking to a cousin of mine and he said, do not fucking do it. He fucked his back. Fucked his back up. He that's fucked his back. He up, said, when he's he... just going to go and that's stretch what happened. Out. Fuck that. That's what happened. And he said, don't ever do it. No, like no, no, it really no, no. ruined his back. Yeah. I, um, I don't think after, if you've, if you've been in any level of car accident, you wouldn't want to be fucking with that. No, but although, I mean, can it... Well, maybe, your, maybe, yeah. Maybe fix your you vertebrae. Get you get... Gonna... You, you sl- Mounting requires skill. I'll say. That's, that's a Tinder <laughs> profile right there. <laughs> I'm, huh, I'm too target. Mounting requires skill. <laughs> Madonna Santa. Yeah. I'm Madonna Santa. I'm a very, very considerate lover. <laughs> Mounting <laughs> is a skill. And a privilege. <laughs> I feel like I'm in like the sexual fucking David Attenborough, you know. It's also, so that's funny. That's story of my life. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. It gets better. Oh, please, go. Mounting requires skill. The rider must first grasp yes. the handlebar oh, yeah. and place one foot foot on a peg above the back wheel. Oh, we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> then the rider scoots yes. the bicycle forward. Scoot me to gain yeah. momentum. So what's going on oh, there? The no, rider first grasps like, the handlebar, as place one foot on the peg above the as back As you're wheel. falling off, like you get up there, and as you're falling, you scoot. And then that momentum corrects your weight, and then you, and then it's but a this, matter but, of. But aren't the wheels up there? That no, they're hitting the ground. Are the wheels all the way at the ground? Yeah, and then it's got that little little thing, and then and then. No, oh, I well, don't. Where's know. the fucking pedal then? Hang on a minute. Hold on to your butts. A penny farthing, mounting a UDC penny farthing. How to? Hang on a minute. No. Oh, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Fuck Here that. we go. How to mount a penny farthing? Like this is ridiculous. I mean, it's, there's heaps of boob tube channels about this, but um, caution this instructional video. Just I want to see the penny farthing. Caution this instructional video oh, is extremely yeah, the, boring. The, the feet. Oh, so it's nowhere near as tall as I was picturing. That's what I was thinking. I was too. picturing. I was picturing uh, Guinness Book of Records, black and white. That's not what he had. He, the guy at the thing, he had, had a big a, one. He had the proper. Up in a the circus air. one. Yes, yeah, oh, and over over dun, the dun, top. Dun, 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 That's why he's juggling. Hard to mount. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah, definitely. It was definitely a hard to mount penny farthing. Okay. So that's the, and that's where the show, that's where the skill on the show. Yeah, that's where lands. the skill to, to mount and jump and. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. But, but I don't know who woke up one morning and said, you know what? Penny hey, farthing. Imagine saying that at your careers office of 30 years ago. What do you farthing. want to do for the rest of your life? I well, want. Well, d- d- well, well, let's just go back one step. I'll just speak for Jezbot. This is a Jezbot <laughs> story. <laughs> Same counsellor. Really? And they said, what do you want to do? And he said, oh, I don't know, but this and that. And she said, how about, oh, here's a good, here's a good job she for She didn't her. tell him to go in the circus, did she? No, but she did say, become a juggler. She did not. She did. Jezbot. Seriously. Jezbot, let's see. Let's <clears> see. <throat> oh, 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 oh he's, 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 he's flat out. He's going to get so angry. He's going to be like, what the no, fuck no, are you no, doing? No, he loves, he loves questions like this. Okay, great. Um... Uh, what were the job options? <laughs> Can he ring? I'd love to hear it though. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll give him a quick buzz. But just, funny. well, just, you know, you're... If he doesn't answer. Let him know, because he might answer. Yeah, he might crack the shits in there. Yeah. Hey, Jasper, you're just on, on a pod at the moment. What was the, oh, yeah. what was the career that was given to you from the careers counsellor at... Um, for year 12, for your, for your bright future? Yeah, they wanted me to either be a circus performer <laughs> juggler. Yes. Um, and I think I said, oh, I'll just be a swagman. And uh... <laughs> So per- circus performer juggler yeah. or a swagman? Um... <laughs> what pod? The guy that camps by the billabong. <laughs> <laughs> a jolly jumbuck. <laughs> either that or a, or a heart surgeon. 
surgeon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or a heart surgeon. <laughs> yeah. Did they tell him to go to become a heart surgeon? No. No, that was that was his. his they said yeah. they said um, you're not allowed to do mathematics. You are going to fail so bad. We won't let. We so won't allow it. Yeah. They won't allow it. <laughs> but he's a carpenter, so you do maths all the time. I've said this before. Yeah. Yeah. You do. Yeah. 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 They didn't know what they were talking well, about. Two plus what? two is four. One, two plus one two hammer. is four. Yeah, one, one hammer minus a slap. What does it cost? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, you get hammered at the end. Is that partial well, credit? Not, yeah. as, as fun as this is, I'm putting in posts. So yeah, good. Off you go. Money. Yeah, cool. I'll call you later. Thank you. Uh, hooroo. Thanks, Haru. Bye. Bye. It's always it's always more fun hearing it from the horse's mouth, isn't it? A circus perform. Circus. She was a well, fucking idiot. Right. Yeah, she was a fucking idiot. I and mean, then, uh, but that's that that to me is comforting because yeah, I was right. Yeah, you were. You were. Of course. I was right. And I mean, does she still exist at that school? She's pretty. She's a nice person. I will sure say, she was. she was very. She was very nice. Doesn't mean nice people aren't stupid. Yeah, it's just like, how do you fucking tell a kid what to be and how to be it? I was told that by a maths teacher in Year Ten that I would amount to nothing. I would be a dreg of society. That was his actual words mm. because I wasn't good at maths. That's that's from confidence boosting. Yeah, his name is Bob Morley. Okay, fuck Bob. Where fuck is he? Bob Morley. He's probably dead. But I remember years. Good, fuck him. But I remember years later because I ended up I becoming a youth him. worker, and yeah. I actually ended up be working as colleagues with some of my old teachers. Yep. And I remember going back to the school and actually telling them because he retired and telling them like, what kind of asshole would do that? Anyway, yeah. it was a bit questionable. Good old fucking Bob Morley. How he, do you reckon you spell his last name? M O R L E Y. But he was in oh, his forties. He keeps 40s. coming out with Bob Marley. Yeah, yeah. I think he. I, I, I can't imagine he's a Facebook person. Do you know what I mean? I reckon he's probably yeah, dead. Because how old am I? Forty six. I mean, look at that I was handsome like, piece of work. Yeah, that's no. not. That's not Bob. No, that's not Bob. And he. No, that's not Bob. Bit of a spunk though. Yeah, how do you spell Bob backwards? But in yeah. any case, I actually had a friend. His name was Robert. Yeah. And I said, you know how this bib still well. Yes. I said, if Bob's short for Robert, is Bib short for Bibbit? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's and, then, I... and then Mason said to me the other day, I said, I, I promise I'll tell this on the podcast. He said, he came up with a little little gag himself. He said, so if if bike riders are called cyclists, then are racers called racists? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine no, wait, that, you have a racist now. pigeon. Yeah, that's it. Racer. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. That's a good one. No, but I'll just say, so Bob, this guy. Bib. Yep. Bib, Bob, Bibbity Bob. He used to say stuff like this in our maths class, like work out the circumference or of a of a C cup bra to a D to a double D cup bra. Okay, fuck this guy. And he was just yuck. Work out the circumference. Yeah, he, he never amounted to anything. He, he amounted to a. To he was a, a f- he was very pedo vibes, like okay. very. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, now I mean, can you imagine? I mean, yeah, probably. Those can who happen. can't molest teach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then molest. <laughs> exactly. We had a teacher at our school that owned a sex shop. Actually. Oh fuck that! You're fired. Yeah, you're Get out. Get the fuck out! I know, but now they've got people who don't know where their cats or dogs. So let's, you know, yeah, true. And even okay. teach. You're back yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sex shop. <laughs> you're in. That's tame no. now compared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. But in any in any case, well, yeah. Timmy Taco. Mm-hmm. The time has come to yeah. get back in our genie bottles, I think. Oh, yeah. It's back into genie. <laughs> yes, Master. Always wanted a genie. Yeah. That particular one. Yeah. you. What, what was her name? Uh, Barbara. Something. Barbara. Is she still alive? Uh, yeah, Not yeah, bad. yeah. I went to a, um, I, went to a Comic-Con she and she was there. I Dream of Genie was at Comic-Con. I Dream of Genie. It was really it, strange. But I don't get it. Is I Dream of Genie. No, nah, it was just a crossover. It was like, I think there was a TV area, but she looked great at 70 really 70 life oh. yeah fucking she looked great amazing yeah i'm gonna just look her up barbara i, I dream of genie it's definitely I barbara dream of genie her actor. name is actor actress uh tony nelson was the other guy is that yeah. what it, no that was the name tony of the, nelson was the character the character what was the i dream of genie controversy <gasps> dun 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 go just find out what her name is most said that Actress. they had not thought of genie as coming from any particular region, religion, or place in the world. Okay. Oh, who gives a shit? Yeah. Uh, did it get cancelled? What is her name? Of? Jane. Barbara Eden. Barbara Eden. That, that era. The Garden of Eden. She was... I a- bet you. <laughs> well, think about the other one in uh, Gilligan's Island. 
What was her name? Um, Ginger. Ginger. Stunning. Yeah. Very yeah. Mal- Marilyn Monroe yes, situation. Yes, based on Marilyn Monroe. Where was it? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. It's the movie star. Where did all these... I mean, honestly, women are just not like that anymore. Oh, it's archetypes. It's the archetype. You should walk around in archetypes sometimes, don't you think? Yeah. It's a good name for a um, clothing brand. Archetype. Yeah. Probably exists. Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. And then, and and what, what, how do you how do you do how do you do the wrap up for your for your pods? What's I your, don't. What I don't. Your footprint on that. That's weird. Shelf. That's strange. Um, there's archetyping entertainment. Yeah. Uh, uh, there is archetype clothing. Hello. What do they sell? Apparel, alternative streetwear. Okay, has to be streetwear. Nordic sustainable clothing for women. Nordic. Nordic. So blue archetype and white, label. Blue and white stripes. Yeah. It is. It's literally archetype. Harry, Harry high pants. Yeah, pretty much. It looks like. Um, Everything's high pants. It, how did you know it was black and white stripes? Because it's that's black nautical. black and white stripes. That's nautical. No, Nordic. Oh, Nordic. I yeah. thought you said Nautic. Oh, no, Nordic. Which is but, of the sea. But. <laughs> so, so sea Sorry, shanties, I should. I should enunciate. Um, semen. Um, <laughs> And the other ones. I should Poop enunci- deck. Um, <laughs> I should yeah. enunciate my words or do that ASMR or whatever it's called. Nordic. You know, well, if it's going to be it's Nordic, it's going to be um, it's going to be blues and. It's yeah. just shit. It's, yeah, it's just. Shit. I mean, sorry for Nordic people, That's, but it's literally it's the archetype of a. Yeah. To me, it reminds simple. me of Amish clothes almost. Oh, like, it is a bit Amish. It's a bit Amish. Do you want to? Oh, that ten well, percent discount code. Uh, do you want to show? Do you want to? Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Why don't you do? Why don't you start the wrap up? Well, as you show people the Nordic influence of our, I can't even see it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Does They get the picture. Yeah. Well, Timmy Taco, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you today, as it is every time I get on the phone with you. And also with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lift your hands up. Yeah. Come up to the high. To, what do they say? Well, you went to a place. Isn't that Catholic? Catholic, yeah. yeah, yeah. Salesian? Yeah. 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 Holy, holy, holy Lord, got a pair of mice. Oh, yeah, and yeah. It's full of your glory. Oh, my God. Well done. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Oh, Blessed my is God. he who comes in the name, name of, of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <laughs> um, it's fabulous. Oh, I can't remember the rest. I know. But I'd have is. to be there with the rest of the drones. But it was those traditions. I mean, don't they just take you straight back to your childhood? Oh, shit, yeah. Absolutely. Hosanna yeah. in the highest. I just think that's a great way yeah. to, you know, <laughs> wrap it up. And now, yeah, now, now they're wearing their Hosannas in the highest. <laughs> now that's an archetype. <laughs> and on that, and on that note... On that note, I hope everyone's feeling well, healthy, and happy. You've enjoyed the podcast. Yeah, it was live, good fun. live cast. Pod? What the fuck do you call it? Yeah, this? no, conversations with Madonna. Conversations with Madonna. Yeah. It's been a great conversation, it as has, it always is with you, yes. uh, Timmy Taco. Also with you. <laughs> <laughs> so help us, God. Indeed. Yeah. You have a glorious day. You too. Let's wrap this up. We're going to have to put everything back now. Yeah, that's it. I just go like that. <laughs> and I feel as. And I Dream a Genie comes out and it gets all done. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, have a beautiful afternoon. Yeah. And I'll see everyone else in cyberspace okay. very soon. Okay, we're out of here. It's what you do that defines you. Conversations. 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 With Madonna. 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 Conversations. 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 Conversations with Madonna.